Hello, my name is Jimmy Bonero, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take a text field and provide a way for a user to be able to enter any value. Once that value is entered, for example it might be an employee ID number, we want to return back to the user what that value might represent inside of a database. So for example if employee ID number is 1234 and that employee ID number is assigned to someone named say John Smith, when the user enters in 1234 then we want to return back John Smith so that way the user knows that they've actually entered in the correct employee ID number. So let's get started and I've already got a project folder set up that's going to hold my configuration and uh, we're going to be using a little bit of code to make that happen. I've got a sample database in here and uh, an output in a work area folder. We're actually not going to set anything up for the output. Um, we're going to be focusing strictly on making the form uh, do what we need it to do. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'm going to open up the DB folder and you'll notice that I've got this sample uh, file that has a table called employee data with uh, something very simple and that's just the employee ID number and a first name and a last name. So when the user again enters 1234 we want to show them that the employee ID number that they just entered belongs to John Smith and if they enter in 1235 that belongs to Mary Jones and so forth. So that's what our database looks like. And we could use really any database. It could be a SQL or Oracle database. Um, I'm using Access for this video because I'll be able to bundle this up in a sample configuration and it keeps everything portable. And uh, you'll be able to use this yourself. So, um, But it could be any database that, uh, that you can create a connection to, which we'll be doing with this one. So let's move over to the process designer real quick and I've got uh, our Konica Minolta Capture component. Uh, again, I'm not going to set up anything with the route, but I've placed my multi-router here so my uh, configuration file will save properly. Uh, now I'm going to open up the Konica component. I'm going to go to the default group and we're going to add a basic form. This form, you can call anything you want, but we're going to call it Validate Employee. We'll be coming to this dynamic form section here in, in just a second, but what we want to do first is get our fields out of the way. Uh, there's going to be two fields that we're going to be using. The first one is going to be the employee ID, and that will be where the user will enter in the employee ID number, and then we want to return that back into a field called employee name. Both of these are going to be text fields, and when the employee ID number is entered, we're going to raise a change event within our script. So in order to listen for that, we want to make sure that this checkbox here to notify server when the field changes is enabled for the employee ID number. So when that value changes, we'll be able to listen to that and respond accordingly to whatever we have uh, programmed in our script. Now I'll return back to the general tab and I'm going to enable dynamic form. We're not worried in this video about the form being submitted or the start menu being pressed um, which would be our submit event nor are we worried about when the form is loaded so I'm going to disable both of these items here we're really just focused on whenever this employee ID number field changes so with these two disabled I'm going to create edit snap in and we get our text editor uh, where we can start writing some code now we're going to be talking to a database. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is, along with all these different using uh, statements here, uh, I'm going to add one more to let us talk to a database um, using Microsoft Access. And I'm going to say using system.data.oledb. And end that with a semicolon. So that's the first thing I want to do, is I want to make sure I've got that namespace added. The next thing is I want to talk to that particular sample database that's inside of my DB folder here. Now I've got right below the KM Capture Capture Component line, I have a region that I've already set up that's going to contain the information that I need for my connection string. That connection string is ultimately going to end up looking like this. And I've broken up the pieces um, of this connection string into two parts. One is the path to um, the actual database itself. Uh, 
And the next thing is the provider that I'm going to be using. And with Microsoft Access, we can use uh, ace.oledb version 12. So I've got this part set up. The next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to look the information up inside of that database. And although my text editor allows me to modify the script, it's not exactly a rich um, tool the, w the same way that Visual Studio is, for example. And what I've done is in Visual Studio, I've created a console application that will basically give me the value that I'm looking for. And it's much easier for me to build it in here. And once I've got it built, I can take that code and put it into, um, into our script. And as you'll notice, I've already got my provider information for the connection string uh, along with the file path already set up. And what's going to happen is when I run this console application, it'll run this section here. So what I've got is a variable to contain the search value that I'm going to be using for testing. And after with me assigning the search value, the next thing I want to do is I create another variable for the employee name. So when I get that value back, I want to store it inside of this variable here. And this will be the function that I'm going to be running, which is get employee name using the argument of the search value that I have right here, which is going to be 1234. Get employee name is located just below. And here, what I'm basically doing is I'm declaring a variable called employee name, and I'm initializing it to really nothing. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to return this value once I get the value uh, from the database. To talk to the database and get the information I want, the first thing I've defined is a select statement. Uh, what I'm doing is here, I'm selecting the first name, space, last name as full name from the table employee data where the employee ID number equals the search value, which is the argument that I'm passing into this function, which would come in from this search value variable that I've defined right up in here. And then the next thing I do is I build a connection string. So I take the uh, provider and then I define what the data source is, which is really just the file path. So using this connection, I'll be able to take that and create a new OLEDB connection that I'm using here. I'll then open it. I'll then uh, run the command as the SQL query, and I'll go ahead and take the reader and execute that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read that. I'm going to take the employee name and whatever I get back as a string in the first index of that, I'm going to go ahead and assign that to the variable employee name, which is right here. If the data reader isn't doing anything, I'm going to close the data reader, close the connection. I'll throw an exception if, if one occurs, and I'll return that employee name. Why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and see what actually happens when I do this. All right. So when I run that, str employee name equals John Smith, which is the employee ID number for John Smith. Um, press any con continue and let's look up 1235. And in this case, I get Mary Jones. Uh, we'll run one more. And I get Clary, Gary Clark. In the case where nothing comes back, the string would be empty. So now that I've got uh, my function is working, I'm going to take this and I'm going to paste it in here. And the way I'd like to do that is I'm going to come below toward the bottom. And we're going to paste that right in there. Because what I want is I want the return value of get employee name to go into that text field. So we're getting pretty close here. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is move up to the field change result section. And I definitely am going to need a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to need is this field change result as a new change result. I don't need any of this information here, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize 
the form fields. And we're going to do both of them as text fields. So the first one will be text field, and we'll call it FLD employee ID. And that's going to equal AS form dot fields. And what I want to do is I want to get the first field, which is an index of zero. The first field is going to be the employee ID number as a text field. And I'll take that same thing, I'll copy and paste, being very careful to make sure that I change the next one, which this will be the employee name, and it'll be the next field, which has got an index of one, or the second field. This is going to allow me to get the value of whatever is in employee ID, and it's going to allow me to assign a value to the employee name uh, field. So let's go ahead and assign the return value. And we'll say FLD employee name is going to equal, correction, FLD employee name dot value is going to equal get employee name and we're going to pass the argument of the employee ID number which the way we can do that is take the employee ID dot value alright let's go ahead and compile and make sure that there aren't any comp compilation errors alright so let me go ahead and save this and let's give it a name of we'll call this a validate employee all right and I'll close that and click OK I'll go ahead and save and let's start the service and see what the results are on the device Okay, so inside of uh, Auto Store on the Konica, I've got my Validate Employee item. I'm going to select that form. And for the Employee ID number, we're going to put in 1234, press OK. And as soon as I do that, on that change, I bring back John Smith. Let's go ahead and try 1235. And now I get Mary Jones. So that was a quick video on how you can take a value that's inside of a text field and do something with that value such as look inside of a database, bring back information, and present it into another field. I hope this video has been informative and until next time, thanks for watching.